Whether you're watching online or in person, we are glad you have joined us. It is an exciting time at the church as we move into the new year, full of new opportunities to serve the Lord. We'd love to welcome our guests. If this is your first time watching with us and you are online, please head to our website and click on the Introduce Yourself button because we would love to get to know you. While you are there, check out our online Bible studies. It is a great place to plug in and get to know new people and God. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. For those who are unavailable to join us in person, don't worry. We'll be streaming our 10.30 a.m. service weekly on YouTube and Facebook Live. If you're looking to make an in-person connection, we also offer a few in-person groups, which you can also find through the ROVC website. It is almost time for service. Let us prepare our hearts to receive from God what He has for us today. Come on, let's worship.
Let's all stand up. Are you ready to worship?
Jesus. Let's do this again. Come on. In Jesus' name. Of your name, King of Man. 
praise unto you Lord we give our hopes unto you we give our dreams unto you we give our gifts Lord we worship you this morning and we thank you that you're here we thank you that you are who you have always been that you are the one who was the one who is and is to come Lord that you have the final say on all things we thank you, Lord, that you have called us to gather here in your presence and give honor to you before men, Lord. And we do. We give you honor and we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Let's just take this moment, church, to, to be his uh, people worshiping in the sight of others this morning. Give him honor. Give him thanksgiving. And give him all your needs this morning. Give him everything. Lord, we just give you it all. We give you it all. We give you it all, all 
of our praise, all of our thanksgiving, all of our problems, every need that we have. We give you our families, Lord. We give you our finances. We give you our future. We give you our presence, our present. We give you our past. Lord, you are all of it, Lord. We just pour out our, our needs to you, Lord, and we thank you for the answers to all of them. And if you've been carrying anything this morning into his house, I want you to just put it, imagine it in your hands right now. Put your hands out in front of you. Any burdens you have, and as pastor has taught us to do, we're just going to throw them up to God, okay? I'm going to count to three, and you're going to not carry them anymore. You're going to release them to the Lord. Amen? One, two, three, release. And we thank you. Thank you, God. I thank you, God. As we are worshiping, I was seeing a whole bunch of rototillers lined up. <laughs> it's springtime, and the Lord is telling you to till up your soil. Till up anything that's been left hard, anything that needs to be opened up so that the rains can come and fill your life. It's time to till it up and don't be afraid. God knows exactly what's in there. There's nothing that we can hide from him. And he loves us. And he's called us to come near. And he says, till up your soil. Don't be afraid because the rains are coming. The spring rains are coming. And it's not going to be a spring like last year that was dry and was had a hard time for the seed to grow. It's going to be a time where his rains are coming. And things are going to grow. And that's a time of fertility in our lives. It's a time to grow. And go forward. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah is right. We had a fantastic time of, of prayer and, and worship here last night. We had a couple of hours. The worship team was absolutely incredible just doing worship throughout the entire time. And there was prophetic songs and spontaneous songs and the prayers that were prayed were so powerful in this place. So we're hoping to do that more than, than just one time. We're thinking maybe a once a month. So we had over 60 people here last night. And so we just want to give thanks to everybody that made that happen. Um, now the ministry fair, this is the last week for the ministry fair. And if you have been looking for a place to get involved, um, you're going to grow. If you do get involved, we're, we are participants in the church, aren't we? We aren't observers. We, uh, we come to the church. We're uh, a vital living stone in the body that's being built together. So that's what the ministry fair has been about to let you know who is operating different areas and let you get educated where you think you see yourself fitting. And there's also a bake sale happening out those doors at the end, too. We've got um, some youth that are interested in raising funds for their boot camp. So you can go out there and get some awesome peanut butter squares, cupcakes, all that kind of thing. Um, that's wonderful. We also have, after the service, we have our foundations class coming. That's a, uh, the pre the precursor to uh, discipleship classes. If you go through foundations first, you'll be ready for anything that is coming up in the foundations classes. Uh, and that happens right here at 1230. And there's lunch provided for any of you that are interested in discipleship or foundations classes. Uh, part of the foundations is uh, getting a class on baptism. And so when that's finished, we're, we just are going to do baptism. So if you've been thinking about baptism, it's been on your heart at all, you have your opportunity. You can just call the office on April 10th. We're going to be doing that. You need to bring a change of clothes that day. If you don't call and you decide that day you want to get baptized, that's okay. We'll do it. You probably just don't want to sit here wet through the whole thing. <laughs> on Monday, this Monday, I think it is, we have paint night. Is there still a couple of spots open in that, Tanya? Okay, that's a lot of fun here. Um, what time is that now? 6.30, paint night is here. And it's $15 to take part in that. Yeah, yeah we're painting the classroom. Yeah, no. No, no, we're painting a picture. Um, Women's conference, today's, today's the last day for the early bird price. We really want you to be able to get um, get registered for that. Even if you don't have your cash, that's fine. Just give your name. Pastor Deb will be out in the, the room to the side here, and she'll be taking your registration. So please get registered for that if you have not yet. Get your name in there. We also are going to do another church social 
on April 4th. We did one um, before, just when COVID came down and the masks came off and we, we wanted to see everyone's faces. We did a social for anybody that had come um, in the last year or two to the church. And, and it was so great, so much fun. People asking for that again. So we're going to do one just open to everybody, just a social because, you know, we just need to hang out, don't we? All right, so that's April 4th. It's going to be held just like we do our summer bonfires, uh, where you just come and you bring a snack to share. That way there's enough food for no, no matter how many people come. And each person be mindful of your own children because there's no programs or ministry for them. And that is, I think I covered it all. That was a lot of announcements today. But you know, the announcements are an important part of church because this is about body life. We come together here to worship on Sundays and the Lord has commanded us to, but we get healthier and happier and better when we have good body life, don't we? So I'm thankful for this church. It's an awesome church. And right now I'm going to dismiss the children to Children's Church and invite Jamie Brose to come receive tithes and offerings. Could we put the Ways to Give slide up, please? Good morning. So in addition to the ways to give, of course, there's also the baskets on either side of the stage if you feel led to give during the worship. We'll let the kids head off. This is always a, a time of great ruckus. <laughs> and I want to make sure I got your attention. So this, this morning we're going to talk about uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at verse 6, okay? Uh, specifically at the beginning of this chapter, uh, Paul is talking about we're sending those to the church to receive your offering to advance the kingdom of God, okay? So this is the context. They're, they're coming to receive an offering to advance the kingdom of God. That's very much of what we're doing right now. So this is Paul's instruction uh, for them to realize when it comes to their giving. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, right? Small crop. I, I, I'm the same with the first service. A few of you need to come and pick up your word. <laughs> you can follow along, okay? So it's a small crop. But he who plants generously will get a generous crop, okay? You must decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need, then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, and this is good, they share freely and give generously to the poor, their good deeds will be remembered forever. So there's a couple things in here that I don't want anyone to miss. Number one, this analogy is like a farmer sowing his seed. So if you don't put anything in the ground, it's not God's fault that you didn't get anything coming up, right? If, if something's not going right, we have to at least ask the question, did I fulfill my end of the deal? Okay, that's, that's pretty plain and simple when it comes in here. And we have to make that decision. It's not God that's going to make this for you. We have to make the decision. The next thing is that God says he provides all you need. Therefore, there is seed. Okay, God didn't say, well, depending on your situation, there may be seed. Right? It didn't say that. It said God provided the seed. So therefore, if we have run out, we have to ask ourselves, did I spend the seed? <laughs> did, I just, did I just eat it? You know, did I eat the seed? Uh, that's the question that we have to ask. And then the thing that I just think is great, uh, verse 8, and I just want to point all of this out. It says, God generously provides. We will have everything we need. We will have plenty left over to share. And... If that wasn't good enough, God says, you will leave a legacy. Your giving will become a legacy because your good deeds will be remembered forever. Amen. So let's receive the offering this morning. Lord, I thank you that you have enabled us to participate so mightily in the kingdom of God and the work that you're doing here in this city and in this nation. So, Lord, we just give it to you. We say, Lord, make your name great. May you bring glory to yourself and that you would become a mighty instrument, um, that we might become mighty instruments of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand up, church. Continue to worship. Deliverance from my 
stay there. you've reserved us for such a time as this. Father God, I thank you that you've had us in the quiver, ready to be pulled out and used at this time. We could have been born a thousand years ago, but no, you said now. When the world was moving into chaos, you wanted a people who would stand on your word, who would declare your word, who would walk by your spirit, who would see your kingdom come. These are the harvesters that the church has been praying for for 2,000 years. Father God, give us strength. Give us strength. Let's pray in the spirit for a minute. Lift the roof in this place. If you pray in English, pray in English. You can pray in Ukrainian if you can do that. Whatever you can do. This is how we fight the battle, Lord. Thank you, Lord. a foolish battle plan. I'm sure he would have said that to Joshua when they were marching around the walls of Jericho. Foolish battle plan. Or he would have said it to the kings when they put the worship team out in front of the army and the Lord. Because the, the battle is not ours, devil. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. And the Lord will give you strength. He uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And there's a confounding going on right now. And I pray, Father God, that your strength would come into us to fight the battle, the good fight, that we would stand for truth, that we would stand for righteousness, no matter what the enemy does, Father, that we would stand in boldness, in courage to declare, Jesus is the coming King. Jesus is the coming King. Jesus is the coming King. This is how I fight my battle. You have a word? Get, get the mic. Get the mic, Pastor Ray. Don't sit down yet. We're going to turn on this auxiliary mic here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Church, I want to tell you, God fights your battles. I'm going to Psalm 5, verse 11. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Is there any rejoicing today, church? Amen. Your trust is in the Lord. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Hallelujah. For with favor you will surround him as with a shield. God is round about you every day of every week. Amen. No matter what you're going through, he's with you. He's for you, and he's round about you. His favor is all about you in Jesus' name. Can I have an amen, church? God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Elijah and Gehazi were up in their house. I don't know if it was their mountain, summer villa, or whatever it was. And, and the enemy armies gathered all around. And uh, uh, Elijah was all upset. And he goes to Eli or, or Gehazi goes to Elijah and he says, Oh, what are we going to do? And, and uh, uh, Elijah, just as calm as could be, he says, Oh, Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes. So Gehazi looked out and there was armies of flaming angels all around him. All around him. When you think this world is winning, Lee, it's not winning. This is just following the progression of what God planned all along. And God has a plan for your life. You are not, as the evolutionists say, a product of random chance, and you're not pawn scum, no matter what they say. You are created in the image of Almighty God, who was and is and is to come. And He's fulfilling His plan in this generation. And you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. This is how we fight our battles. Amen. Father God, I pray that you'd fill us up to overflowing right now in Jesus' name. That we'd be filled with your spirit for the battle that's ahead. Father God, that we'd run our race with perseverance. That we'd run and not grow weary. That we'd not look at the storms all around us. But we would fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord God, strengthen us in this last lap in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hoot. Hallelujah. Let's do that one more time. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our Lord Jesus. I pray today as we look into the word that you'd break off anything that's false in our thinking. That we would be equipped for what we're called to do. For those that are carrying burdens for their family relationships, I pray, Father, that they would learn to fight that battle by trusting you. For those who have lifted their eyes up to see the nations and the distress of nations, Father God, that they would learn to trust in you. You have a good plan in all of this, Lord God. And our task is to simply submit our lives to you, to do what you call us to do, to say what you call us to say, to go where you call us to go, and to stay where you call us to stay that we would be obedient to you in all these things. This is how we fight the battle. We just focus on you, Lord Jesus, and you fight the battle all around us, all around us. Give us that peace that Elisha had in the midst of the armies all around. He was not concerned. He, was, he had what it took to stick through and do what you called him to do, and that we would might have that same thing in us, in Jesus' name. Well, give the Lord a big hand this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you, you can be seated, hallelujah, if you want to, or stand if you want. Hallelujah. We got the three amigo guitar players today. <laughs> andale, andale. And a bass player. <laughs> Who likes to hang out with guitar players? Bass player. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Terry, and uh, welcome to Regina Victor Church. If you were joining us online, uh, we pray that you would feel the presence of God in your home, because he's certainly in this house. 
in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Well, we have this last day of the ministry fair. The whole idea of that is to reboot the church uh, after COVID where we were forced to shut down. And uh, I don't want to do that again. Uh, let's go forward uh, while, the, while the time is right here. And uh, But uh, uh, as a result of that, you know, uh, we were all compliant, especially in the beginning, uh, to try to do what was right. But as things moved along, I'm ready to be back in church. Amen. Amen. And uh, it is good to be in the house. I think it's safe in here. Uh, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you want to wear a snorkel, wear a snorkel. Just wear something, okay? Wear, wear something, you know, have a little bit of dignity, you know. Uh, <laughs> we had our new floor pour, pour, I can't say poured in foyer in the same sentence. We had a new floor poured in the front, yesterday and so that'll be dry, drying uh, this week and uh, they were polishing it, not polishing it but doing the yeah, power troweling it there last night so that's exciting. Uh, anyway at the ministry fair this is the last Sunday for that and what we've been trying to do is highlight different ministries if you're new with us or you're a, a, a guest here today uh, we want you to know that we strive really hard to make sure that this is a church where it's really easy for you to get involved a place where you can put your hand to the plow and plow with us. Yeah. Now if you want to plow the wrong direction we might have to talk to you but uh, if you're going to plow with us and go in the right direction we really want to get everybody involved. It says in Ephesians chapter 4 that every joint should supply. And I could give you scriptures from all over. You're going to grow when you serve the Lord. Amen. And we want you to grow. We're not just uh, raising up a congregation of, of observance. We're raising the army of the living God. God needs an army in these days. And I don't mean militant as the word means uh, army. Uh, we fight with weapons that are not carnal. We fight like we did this morning. And we're going to see salvation in our homes, in our children, in our families, in our community. Uh, we are the harvesters. Yeah. Hey? And so we're going to, we're, we want you equipped. We have a, a fairly elaborate discipleship training program that you can go through. You'll be fully equipped for whatever's coming up. It starts with the foundations class. Another thing we need to reboot, Jamie, we need to get together and discuss this. We need to reboot our home groups. Uh, we weren't even allowed to meet in homes. Remember at Christmas, you know, I don't know about you, but we were kind of sneaky, had the kids parked down the, uh, down the street a little bit. <laughs> They didn't even want us meeting with our families. And so our home groups had that they want. We've got a bazillion groups online. They used to all be in homes. And we need to start to transi transition back because there's nothing like meeting in homes. Right. Amen. So maybe we have lots of groups online, but we're going to be starting uh, to refire home groups. Maybe you have a home that's suitable. You could host a home group. Or maybe you feel you're ready to lead a home group. Uh, get a hold of us, and we're going to start to coordinate that. Uh, can you say Amen. Now, last week, uh, I, I, I preached on abiding in the vine. You know, as I spend time praying for the church and where are we, uh, I believe that we are a, a, a special people. The Bible says that, uh, but not just in the, the body of Christ. Uh, this generation is called uh, to bring in the harvest. This generation is called to do great exploits. It says in the book of Daniel with the rise of the Antichrist that those who know their God, do you want to know God? Those who know their God will rise up and do great exploits. There's great things ahead. And, and as I think about the church, you know, some of the basic foundational things we had to go back to, I believe we have to reinforce uh, the, the foundational things. And so I preached a message on the passage that I think everybody's familiar with, abiding in the vine. Jesus talked about abiding in the vine. If you want to bear fruit, you need to abide in the vine. And I'm going to review that a little bit quickly this morning and then go on to what that fruit can look like in your life. Uh, amen. Because we didn't go there last week at all. You know, I, I see these tumultuous times. Uh, you watch on the news or you watch however you get it now through uh, YouTube or that's pretty censored. I like Rumble. There's different places that you can go uh, to find 
find uh, the unfiltered uh, news, Epic Times. There's different places that you can go if you don't know where you can find the unfiltered news. You know, the news is very filtered. They're very controlling. We're in a tyrannical time uh, right now where they're, they are squashing free speech. Uh, you know, it's science if you agree with them. If you don't agree with them, it's not science. You know, it's, I don't know what it is. It, we're, we're in this insanity. And now we've tr transitioned out of COVID into the possibility of a world war breaking out. And it's a very real possibility. I'm not believing God for that, but we don't know. There's wars and rumors of wars right now going on, and we don't know where this is going. In fact, I want to let you know, you don't know what's going on in Ukraine. You don't know what's going on in Russia. You can't tell from the media. There's all kinds of backstories going on here. But what I've been trying to share with the church is we need to focus on the work of the church. All that chaos, you know, we're being led uh, internationally. Uh, it's like we're in a bad movie. And here's your leader, not sure where he is. Another one, our, our leader in Europe s saying stand up for human rights. And at home, he's imprisoning people who are standing up for human rights. It's, it's, it, it's, it's a bizarre time. And in the midst of this for the church, you know, as I pray, God, what, what, what do we need to do? You know, there's a number of things. We, we talk about a great revival, and I, I can believe God uh, for a great revival in the, in the end times, but there's also other things talked about, a great falling away, an apostasia, an apostasy within the church. And I don't know that we maybe have, we're seeing it right now. Half of the church is absent. That's not abiding in the vine. Now, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. <laughs> You're here. But as a pastor, my, my, my job is a, is a little different. Um, you know, we sang this, mor this morning the song, I am a child of God. And if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a child of God. But the reality is, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not a child of God. No matter what religious people tell you, you must be born again. Amen. And I'm not going to go into that today, but you know, Jesus called the Pharisees, he says, you, you are of your father, the devil. That was the religious people of his time. Religion doesn't get you into paradise with Jesus. Religion, religion won't do it. You see, we have a God who's awesome. He's, he's awesome in power. He, he's majestic. He's, he breathed out the heavenly places. He, he, he's incredible. And he is very, extremely just. And he says, all sin will be paid for. But because he's also merciful... He provided a way to pay for your sin so that you don't have to. But if you don't accept that, you are not going to heaven. I don't know how many funerals you've been at that they, oh yeah, he's in a better place, she's in a better place. And you know that they were not a believer whatsoever. That's not true. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Christ, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. You say, but isn't everybody created by God? Aren't they creating it? Yes, they were. But then, if you read the very beginning of the book, mankind fell under sin and were cast out of paradise. And symbolically, you become a child of the devil. But God wants to adopt you back into his family. But the only way he can do that is to cleanse you from that sin. And Jesus is the way to do that. Now, that's a free sermon. That's not part of my notes. But you don't know that anyway. When I see all these troubles coming, I, I get excited as a believer. As a pastor, I get concerned because I don't want to lose one of you. I don't want to lose one of you. I don't want, to, I want one of you deceived to thinking you're okay when you're not okay. So we got to abide in the vine. 
I talked about this last week, but we, we all want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, don't we? we? We all want to hear that when Jesus gets back. But even in that parable, there's the one who didn't hear that. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, I've, I've said it a million times. Well, maybe not a million, but a lot. Revelation 22, 12. Look, I'm coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. The evil ones for their evil deeds and the righteous ones for their righteous deeds. We want to have something to offer, don't we? John 15, 8, this is in the story of abiding in the vine. Jesus concludes with this, By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Say much fruit. Much fruit. So you will be my disciples. He, he wants us to bear fruit. And what does that fruit look like? It's not the fruit of this world. It's the fruit of what God wants us to produce in our life that's important. Elon Musk, I pray he gets saved. But if he doesn't get saved, he can be the richest man the world has ever known. And he's going straight to the pit of hell unless Jesus has come covered him for his sin. You can bear all the fruit of this world, but what about the fruit that God wants you to bear? That's what's important. And Jesus said, without me, you can do no good thing. You can't bear fruit unless you abide in the vine. So last week we looked at the word abide. What does it mean to abide? And it's quite simple. It means to remain in place or to stay attached. You, you got that? To remain in place or stay attached. And so if you read that story about abiding in the vine, I, I pulled three things out last week and I want to build this as the foundation for what I talk about today. You need to stay attached to the vine. In the, in the illustration of the vine, and it's really a metaphor to help us understand a higher reality, Jesus' world. He uses several metaphors to describe it. He uses a vine, and we use as a building, and he uses a, a human body to try to describe the same thing. Well, in the vine, as I told you last week, you look at those fields in the Okanagan or in Niagara or wherever you go to see uh, vines, that whole field that's covered by that has one root system, one root, one plant. Did you know the vine is one plant? Now it sends down suckers and all. This isn't a bi like, like the judge being uh, questioned in, in the States. I'm not a biology teacher either, but uh, I'm not an agrologist or whatever it is. But it's one vine. That root of that vine in this story is Jesus. Say Jesus. He is the root of the vine. How do you stay connected to the root? Well, we talked about last week, you need to be in the Word. Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, say the Word, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. You need to stay connected to the Word. Forget what the, what the popular news is saying. Forget what, 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 Whoever is saying, what does the word say? That is the truth. My word is truth. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall endure forever. We need to stay attached to the word. And I tell you what, in these days, church, you need to be in the word every day. It is the manna that comes down from heaven. It is life. If you want to know God in these days, I'll tell you what, you need to be in the word. Jesus is the word. Spending time in the word. You want to prosper and bear fruit? And again, I'm not talking talking about world prosperity. I'm talking about spiritual prosperity. He told Joshua, this word needs to be in your mind, it needs to be in your heart, and it needs to be in your mouth, and you will prosper in everything you do. You want to bear fruit for the kingdom of God, you need to stay attached to the root, the word. Amen. Number two, you need to be part of the vine. Not just one little stick attached to a big root system. Jesus is a pretty big root system. I'm just all by myself here, bearing fruit. It's actually comical when people stand before God and they talk about, you know, how they looked at the church. So let's look at the analogy of the, of the building, you know, the temple. You, you are the, I have the Holy Spirit. I am the temple. Well, yeah, yeah, you, you're part of it. In the, in the same way this stage could say I'm part of the church. It, yeah, it is, but it's not the whole church. It's just, it's got its part, its function. Uh, the, the Bible describes that you have the Holy Spirit in you. You are the temple, but you're being built into a spiritual temple 
And who's the chief cornerstone? Jesus is the cornerstone of this building. Just like he's the root of the vine, he's the cornerstone of the building. And each one of us have a part to play and we need to abide in the building. We need to abide in the body. You need to stay attached. You need to stay plugged into the body of Christ. Don't stand on the outside criticizing the church. I like to have friends and acquaintances. Start criticizing my wife. You weren't there, it's a good thing. I, I leaned over in the old, maybe I shouldn't tell this story. <laughs> Listen to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, if I get riled up, if you're speaking against my wife, I'm not going to start speaking against girly to Jamie. He going to poke me. He bigger than me. I'll tell you what, Jesus is bigger than Jamie. He's bigger than me. He's bigger than all of us. He breathes out stars. You're going to start criticizing his bride? Yes. Who is the accuser of the brethren anyway? Yeah. The reformed theologians. No, it's the devil. If you see a problem in the church, plug in. Oh, there's a lot of churches you can't plug in. They won't let you. That's not here. We're trying to build an army that can conquer the world for Jesus. We need those of you that are smelly, <laughs> offensive. And we'll work with you right where you are to try to bring, as long as you, now I'm getting really getting in trouble here. <laughs> We've got the vine. You've got to stay connected to the vine. The, the human body, that, that's another example that, that, that he gave. If, if you're fighting against the body, what, if you have a human body and you've got a part of it that's fighting against the rest of it, we call that cancer. You need to find your place, plug in and serve with the gifts and the talents that you've got. If you can see a real, you know, uh, who can I poke? I better not. <laughs> Stay connected to the church, number two, and abiding in the vine. Stay in the, this is last week's we're going over. Maybe it's that important. Plugged into the root, abiding in the vine, part of the building, part of the body. And finally, back to the vine analogy, in every living plant, there's fluid. Uh, I don't know what you call the nutrients that come through the plant. Uh, in in the, our, our little illustration, that's the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit flowing in your life. For a long time, the church taught that the Holy Spirit, you know, he was sleeping or he was on holidays. I want you to know he's alive and well. Amen. And he has power to transform your life. We had this prayer meeting here last night and uh, uh, he's an he's a, uh, evangelist I was talking to and he just prayed a little blessing over him and I, and I just wanted to go home. I got to get up and go to church tomorrow and it's late and I got chairs to put out and everything else. And I put my hand on him and I just was going to pray a blessing for him and I just started to prophesy into his life. And, he, and he, he, he's not from our church. He looked very wonderful, man. He went back like he said, man, that's, that's incredible. It's exactly what I'm going through. And you know how much of that was me? None. Just allowing God's spirit to flow through you yeah. and to bear fruit. And I hope I helped the fella out, you know. I, I hope he got something from God that he can take. But we need to be connected to the root. We need to abide in the vine. And we need to be filled with the spirit. And I'll probably speak on this in the next few weeks. Things that we can do that drive the spirit out of our lives. Your anger, your rage, your, your wicked thinking, things coming out of your mouth, uh, behaviors, thoughts, these things. He, he, gets, he gets offended. Not, well, I don't know, offended is maybe not. He doesn't like it and he backs off. And if you're going to be, bear fruit, you know, if you cut the nourishment off from the vine, uh, it doesn't matter how fruitful the branch is that you're attached to, you're not going to bear fruit. Right. Well, so we had those foundational things. This week I want to talk about some uh, um, practical ways. We're going to look at practical things that the Apostle Peter said uh, that you can do to bear fruit that's uh, uh, right with God. And we're going to look at what Paul said. Some simple things that he said. I want you to go to 2 Peter 1 verses 2 to 10. And I'm going to read through this. This is the Apostle Peter speaking. 
I kind of relate to him more than anybody else. He was rough and gruff and some made lots of mistakes and uh, I can relate to him uh, fairly well. I don't know about you, Stacy, but uh, he said this, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge, say knowledge, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue and by and by which have been given to us exceedingly great pro pro and precious promises that through these you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We can become partakers of the divine nature. We can become Partakers of the very nature of God. This is why we need to stay connected to the root. You need to be in the word. A lot of people have pictures in their mind of what God is like or what he isn't like or my God's not like that or my, my God's not so judgmental. You don't even know God when you talk like that. That's idolatry. To make a God fashioned according to what you think. This is why we need to be in the Word. He's a good God. He's a perfect God. He's an awe. Get to know Him. You read some of the stuff, you take a snippet out of the Old Testament, and you think, well, that's pretty angry and pretty, how, how could that be God? Read the whole story. Yes. <laughs> My pastor Terry's a pretty angry guy. Get to know me. <laughs> I'm generally pretty happy. But if I caught you beating up one of my kids, but don't just show that part. Do you see what I'm saying? Get to know him. What is he like? What is he not like? If we're going to serve the true living God, you've got to know him. If you're going to become like him, you've got to know what he's like. A lot of religion, I'm, I'm on this today, a lot of religious people out there saying God's okay with this and God's okay with that. I don't know what God they're talking about, but the God of the scriptures is not okay with every behavior. Amen. He gives us the divine power to live right, to become partakers of his divine nature, we can take on the very qualities and nature of God. This is what it talks about. You're being transformed from glory to glory into the very image, the very nature of Jesus. You're not, you're not going to look like him with a 30-year-old man with a beard and a, a long... It's not talking about that. It's you becoming like him, thinking like him, acting like him, responding like him. And the more you become like Jesus, bearing Christian fruit is not going to be something that you have to strive for. It's just going to happen. An apple tree doesn't have to go, oh, I'm going to try to produce an apple today. Oh, a pear. What? <laughs> if you become like Jesus, you're going to bear fruit that, that God likes. Right. Well, let's go on here. Verse 5. But for this very reason... And we're going to go through this step by step. For this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and for, has forgotten that he is been cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent, say diligent, to make your call and election sure. As your pastor, I want you to make your call and election sure. Yes. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. An abundant entrance. I remember doing a word study on that years ago, and it's just, it, it's, it's so profound. You know, you walked in today to this place, and you were given a, you know, a, 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 I hope if our greeters are doing their job, smiled and said hello, you knew here, here's a this or that, or can I help you? To You know, you were given a, an event. That's not the type of entrance it's talking about. 
This is talking about a, a stadium, like at a rider stadium. And you walk in, I walk into the rider stadium and somebody might take your, your ticket if you're clean enough to get in. And you get in there and somebody might say hi or try to sell you a 50-50 or whatever. That's an entrance too. But I'll tell you what, if, uh, if the Queen of England came to the rider game, everybody would get up and they'd clap and they'd, woo, or maybe, I don't know, who would be really popular these days. That's the, who? You? Trudeau. <laughs> like, like the welcome he got in the European Union. Uh, anybody see that? No, not like that. <laughs> One person gets saved, it says in heaven, the angels stop to throw a celebration. It's such a big deal. And when you get there, if you've been fruitful in your Christian life, you've allowed God to transform you into the image of Jesus, I tell you, there's an abundant entrance waiting for you. There's a mansion prepared for you. It's going to be a great day. You don't want to miss out on that. So how do we do, how do we add all these things? How, how, do we, how do we make this happen? We're going to go through that list, but before we do that, I just want to go to the Apostle Paul for a minute. We're going to go to Colossians 3, 8 to 10, because he gives us a simple illustration of, of how we can be more like Jesus, okay? Uh, you know, when you got born again, God did not remove your free will. That's a gift from him that's irrevocable. Your free will. So you give your life to Jesus. You can still decide whether you're going to serve him or not. Uh, we have the whole question of losing your salvation. I don't want to go there. Uh, let's, how, how, do we, how do we serve him? How do we, how, do, how do we do this? You have a free will. You have a part in this. I shared this earlier. Maybe I'll share it again. I quite enjoy listening to 15, 20 minutes of Jordan Peterson every once in a while. I just listen, but you get about 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in, your brain starts to hurt and smoke comes out of your ear. It's a little bit hard. He's, he's, he's pretty over the top, but I kind of like him. He's on a faith journey. I think he's, he's either saved or he's right on the edge. The more he presses into thinking, uh, he's discovering God. Uh, but, but I watched a little clip of him the other day, and he's, it was it, when he was teaching university classes, and he was teaching me, he says, this whole generation has been taught rights, and they're making up rights and rights, and now everybody's a victim, and what nobody's teaching is responsibility. You have a responsibility. You you have a response. And when we know that we have responsibilities, it changes everything. And G I think that's a message Jesus would like to get out to the church. You have been bought with a price. You are not your own. So serve God with your body. Can you say amen in this place? We have a responsibility to serve him. Paul says this, Colossians 3, 8 to 10. But now you yourselves are to put off all these. Say put off. Put off. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off, say put off, put off. the old man with his deeds and have put on, say put on, put on, the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. There's that renewing in knowledge. You're hooked to the root. You're hooked to the cornerstone. You're hooked to, the, oh, the body. You know, what's the illustration of the body? He is the head of the body. He's in charge. You're hooked to him. You're getting to know him. And now you're putting off the old man and putting on the new man. And you know what the new man's supposed to look like because you know Jesus. He's the second Adam. These words in, in Greek, I don't know if I should try to amaze you with my Greek trans, uh, maybe not. <laughs> to put off means to lay aside or to lay something down. To put on means to put something on. And the context of these words is not really complicated. Uh, it, it, generally, these words are in the context of I put off a piece of clothing. I, I take it off. Take off the old man. Take off the anger. Take off the wrath. Take off the foul speaking. And put on the new man that you're coming to know. Put on Jesus. What would Jesus do? How would Jesus act? What would Jesus say? What would Jesus think? 
Are you okay with this? How do we do this? It's not complicated. Ask, you have the Spirit of God living in you. That little question, what would Jesus do? That's a good question. It is. Amen. I'll tell you, this hasn't happened so much lately, but when I first started pastoring, I can remember counseling people, trying to work out something. And I can remember, you know, I, I, I'd really like to just reach, this is what I'm thinking. I'd like to reach across my desk and just knock you out. <laughs> I was a lot younger, okay? Now the swing would probably knock me down. <laughs> and, and, and honest to God, I'm in my office and I'm thinking, I got these two guys and this one guy was just, you're wrong. You're, that's, that's bad. I, it's really bad. I'd like to clip you. And, and, and I'm thinking, you're a pastor. <laughs> Don't do that. And I thought, well, what, would, what would Jesus do? You know what? I, I didn't feel much like a pastor. My old man was still pretty vibrant. He still has to be shoveled down every once in a while, as those of you that are close to me know. But you have to take off yes. the old and put... I'm getting tired of doing that. Can I just leave that up? And it's, it's okay. What, this little thing? I'm probably all ringed up here. I don't. It's it's. Don't lift my arms. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's a church. You're not supposed to laugh or have any fun. <laughs> How do we do it? It's an act of your will. Now let's go back to to. Peter's list of the things, and we're just going to walk through them quite quickly here. He starts it with give all di due diligence, and I like the sound of this in Greek, so I'm going to say it, uh, spude, it's, it's pretty easy to say, spude, give, give diligence. What, what does that mean? It says, you know, to this, this, this endeavor that you've got on, to take off the old, put on the new, uh, that make sure you do this with diligence. That means to do it with haste, to take care of business, to be very careful, to be forward, to be earnest in accomplishing it, promoting or striving after it, to give all diligence, give interest towards oneself most earnestly. You're going to, I'm going to tackle this. I'm going to let this stuff develop in my life. I'm going to take off the old and put on the new. And while we're supposed to be diligent about our development as Christians, we've made it an extracurricular activity. Remember, we started getting fired up for Jesus and, uh, then we met this couple that were, I couldn't believe they were Christians 24-7. Well, you Tuesday night, you want to talk about Jesus. Did I lose something there? Battery. Battery is still in full jet. <laughs> well, if we weren't online, I could just talk louder. Talk loud, eh? <laughs> What's that? Oh. Oh, I'd really rather preach from the floor, but you can't see me. I, I got to go quick. That, <laughs> I'm not going to do this now. Can I go through this real quick? You have to study this out, but uh, add to your faith. That's your belief in Jesus. Virtue, and that, that word virtue, we, we, we don't quite understand. In the Roman world, that was the, a, a man uh, of high integrity. It would be a man that would treated people right, treated them uh, almost like royalty, just a really good guy. Uh, you, you want to do that? that isn't, I, I, if I go this quick, it's just going to be time's up. Preach it next week. Then what do I do with the first service? This is complicated. <laughs> and our first service was almost full. Amen. You never make the deadline of the second service. It's okay. 
Is it okay with you? Well, she says it's okay. It's her I got to worry about, though. I'm glad I have your approval, but I like to sleep in the house. <laughs> Moral excellence. Standing strong for what's right. Think of it that way. God needs Christians who will stand strong for what's right. Amen. And I don't want to get into little stories here, but when they first came out with the mask thing, I thought, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm just not doing it. And the Lord actually spoke to me. He says, can't you wear a mask to be able to relate to my people? It's just a, it's just a mask. I said, yeah, I can. For now. But we have to be checking with God all along yes, through this. All, 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 all along. We need people who are going to stand up. We need Another word for virtuous could be boldness or courage. Uh, this is why we encourage you. You know, we should do that prayer night again, and there should be 100 people the next time. I, it, it was quite powerful. I got to be an usher, and I stood at the back. I quite enjoyed that. I think I'm going to change my position in the church. Uh, uh, hi, how you doing? Here's the thing. I like that. You guys got the best job in the place. <laughs> Acts 4.29 says, Now, Lord, look at their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. And when they had prayed, verse 31, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They didn't go out and come against all the Roman laws. They came out and declared the truth. I think that's a, a trap that we can get into. We want to fight all the things of the world where instead we should spend our time. Jesus didn't talk about the Roman taxes. He preached the kingdom of God is near. My old man wants to... <laughs> Add to your moral excellence knowledge. Your faith, your courage, knowledge. This is translated in the New Living Translation as knowing God better. In the Living Bible, it's translated to know God better and to discover what He wants you to do in, in every individual situation. Uh, it, it's not enough just to have courage. But Jesus, when do you want me to speak? When do you want me to be quiet? When should I step forward? When should I step back? This is how we fight our battles. We want to choose them wisely, and you need some knowledge. And then, you know, raw courage isn't enough. You need to know him. You need to be hooked to the root. It says in 2 Timothy 2.15, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So to your faith, your courage, and your knowledge add self-control. This is something I need right now. To limit yourself. To know how much is enough. You know, it says in Hebrews, that one passage, it says, to strip off the things that so easily ensnare you and the sin. Not everything that sidetracks you is sin. But if you are diligent and you are focused, you're not going to get caught into this and this because you have the self-control to know, I know what I need to do here. Amen. What else? Faith, courage, knowledge, self-control, perseverance. This is translated in the King James as patience. In the NRSV, it's endurance. I like the NLT, it's patient endurance. And I always thought to have the patience of God meant the ability to sit in the doctor's office. That's not it. Although one time I w we went to a doctor's for supper and something happened at the church, this is years ago, and we were about 45 minutes late. And I walked in and said, you know, I always wanted to make a doctor wait for me. <laughs> it's funny, he didn't think it was funny at all. And so started our evening. Yes. 
James 1, 2 says, My brother, encounter all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Say patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. The type of patience that the Bible is talking about here is to be able to go through hard times without cursing God. Job had patience. He could go through it. He didn't know what was going on. But one thing I know, my Redeemer lives. He knew that there was something good going to happen. I don't understand. This. How did people get through the Holocaust? How did they get through the, the Stalag Gula? How did they get through all of that and keep their mental health? They were able to trust God in the midst of all kinds of trouble. That's the patience God wants to build into our lives. And I think we may need it. Faith, courage, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness. That just means to be devoted to God. I'm going to get on to the last two and get you out of here. Uh, the last two are brotherly love and the last one is love. Brotherly love is Philadelphia. Uh, that just means to love the body of Christ. And it's one of the things I love about the church. You got a problem, you need a tree. We, we, got, we got everybody here. We got doctors, we got lawyers, we got, we, we got uh, estheticians, and we got really nice guys. <laughs> I was bragging about you in the first service, and I didn't, didn't do it here. But, uh, can you love the body of Christ? Can you get plugged in and think, you know, I can remember times with my, my natural brother. He, he's one of my best friends in my life. And there's times where we came to blows. And an hour later, we're laughing about it. Because there's forgiveness. There's grace. It's family. And we got to build that in the church. And then the last thing, once you've done that's Philadelphia, the last thing you add, now you're, you're being come like Jesus. Love. Not just love for the brothers and sisters, but love for everybody. Lost for, love for the alcoholic. Love for the drug addict. Lost for the, love for Elon Musk, who's got all the money in the world, but if he doesn't know Jesus, he's lost. Just that love that starts to pour out of you. Uh, and that, that's what God wants of his, of his church. You want to bear fruit that endures, become like Jesus. To become like Jesus, you need to be tied to the vine. You need to be tied to the root. You need to stay in there. Hang in the church. Church is not plan B. It's only plan A. It's, the only, it's God's plan to redeem this world. To, that the church would rise up. His body, His temple, His vine. And move in the Holy Spirit. Why don't you stand up? pretty bossy I am it's getting late I'll tell you as my as your pastor I, I sometimes get overwhelmed thinking about the ones that don't really know them and you're just coming to church we need you to know them and by their fruit you'll know them the fruit are you becoming more like Jesus Maybe you've been stuck in a rut. You know, we've seen this. We've talked about this. My wife and I, it's like somebody that gets unforgiveness in their life and they won't let go of something. It's like a tree and you keep going around it and around it and you never break free into whatever else God has for you. Maybe, maybe you've got unforgiveness today. I break that in Jesus' name. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Jesus knew how to break those things off. He knew how to cut them loose. And we need you to be able to start to act like Jesus. So that you can stop going around this. Maybe it's bitterness in your life. Maybe I don't know what it is. We've all got our issues. Maybe it's anger. Whatever it is. Uh, right now, we're just going to release the power of God to break whatever's hindering you if you will tap into this. Can you do that? If you'd like, just raise your hands right now. There's a, there's a, a million different things we could call out here. But we don't need to. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what you need to go to the next level in Christ-likeness. Father God, I I prophesy to your spirit now. Come, breathe on us. Reveal to us areas that need to change and give us strength to change them. And not just our human willpower. Father, you've given us divine power to develop a divine nature. So right now, Holy Spirit, I prophesy, come and advance us from one level of glory to the next. That we might be more like Jesus every day. Those things 
things that we were so hard on would become simple to let go of. Father God, strengthen us this day in Jesus' name. And if you're receiving from God, give the Lord a hand. God said to Moses, this is how I want you to bless my people. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you. The Lord raise up his countenance upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. And I release that right from God's heart into your life. Give them everything they need to bear fruit. In Jesus' name. One more hand for Jesus. If you need prayer for anything, personal prayer, we have a prayer team assembled. They'd be happy to pray for you. Other than that, God bless you. Stick around for a coffee, pick up some sweets, and send the youth to boot camp. And if they get enough, they'll come back. We hope you enjoyed today's worship service. I'm the other Pastor Terry. If you're new here, we would love to meet you and have you introduce yourself at reginavictory.com. You can drop us a line and let us know you're watching.